Namaste. There are two pranayama techniques in Hatha Yoga which you need to approach with care. Unless you are initiated and if your goal is to just to increase your energy levels and for general health and wellness purposes, yeah, don't do the following. Yeah. Pastrika and Murcha Pranayama. So they are easy to learn in theory, but the question is, are we prepared? And the preparation needed for them to happen safely will require yeah, years and years of practice. All right, Basrika Pranayama, let's talk about that first. During Basrika Pranayama or the bellows breath, we subject our bodies into high intense levels of oxygen. And our you know, heart, the lungs, and the brain, they are not prepared to do that in a normal circumstance. Therefore, something would have to you know, function as regulators inside the body so it can distribute yeah, the levels of energy needed for our internal system to function healthily. And what are this? Bandhas. Bandhas collect and regulate the flow of energy so they can distribute the energy where we need it the most. Nadis. Nadis absorb the excess layers of or extra levels of energy so we don't uh, overload the system. Yeah, cardiorespiratory strength, definitely given. In relation to that, people with heart disease, hypertension, low blood pressure, vertigo should not practice Bhastrika Pranayama. Yeah, and of course, the strength of your body because Bhastrika Pranayama will require you yeah, some distinct uh, body alignment. And this, they don't happen overnight. Yeah, one technique alone, one aspect alone would maybe take years. Yeah, to to achieve you know, or develop. All right. So if approached without this preparation, Bastrika could cause what? Sudden drop of body temperature, sudden rise in blood pressure, or even drop in blood pressure, and it could lead to abnormal intracranial pressure. This could lead what to falling, swooning, fainting, or even yeah, temporary stoppage of your heart. Yeah. Next, murcha, which is more sensitive, actually. Murcha pranayama, yeah, murcha means to, to, to sway, to swoon, to detach, to suspend. Yeah, so, but it is not a literal sensation. Murcha means to back off from the disruptions or the disruptions of the external senses so we can come closer to the subtleness of our energy yeah, for deeper meditation later on. In the murcha pranayama, yeah, so we normally tilt the head back, and that tilting of the head constricts the medulla oblongata, yeah, the pathway of the breath leading to the rest of our system. And then we don't want to be constricting the back of the neck in a normal situation because that could yeah, disrupt the flow of oxygen to the brain. All right, next, in the Vastrika, in the Mucha Pranayama, we also apply the Shambhavi Mudra, the gazing you know, passively. There, yeah, looking passively, like you're looking between the eyebrows, but you're not. Yeah, you're magnetizing your optic muscles there, your optic nerves. And that could lead to oversensitivity of your optic uh, muscles, optic nerves, and it could lead to what? Yeah, sudden drop and change of intracranial pressure. Because our eyes, the optic muscles and the nerves are directly attached to the occipital part of the brain. And this could lead to the oversensitivity of the sense of hearing, the sense of uh, eyesight, and even the sense of smell. And you don't want that because this could linger for not just after the practice, this could linger for hours or even days. And if you are not yeah, um, equipped you know, with the technique so you can dissolve and go back to your normal, I say, functions, yeah, this could linger and could cause you know, serious conditions, mental and even psychological and emotional imbalances as well. Okay, now another technique you know, we do in combination or in conjunction with the Murcha Pranayama is what? The tongue, the tongue mudra. Normally, when we do the um, tilting of the head and the Shambhavi mudra together, we perform what? Either the Nabu mudra, the sealing of the surface of the tongue against the hard palate, which is if you do it separately and just that without doing the other things there, yeah, it's healthy. Yeah, to soothe and calm the brain. But if you combine the Nabu Mudra with the Mucha, that's where the issues could arise. Because in the Nabu Mudra, you know, we direct you know, the breath straight up to the brain. And then with the tilting of the head back and on the eyes, you might overload your cranial cavity. Now, because after you know, one round of Mucha Pranayama, the effect is so instant, yeah, your system might not be able to sustain this sudden rush of electricity to the brain. 
All right. Another Tang Mudra that we apply during the, the Murcha Pranayama is the Kachari, where we allow the surface or the tongue to enter the back of the uvula towards the nasal cavity. And that will, in effect, what? Stimulate the inner pathways that are close to the pituitary gland. And then this could what? Yeah, um, activate the uh, function of the pituitary system, and this could lead to what? Over, yeah, production of the chemicals, and, um, the uh, endocrine and the adrenal system may emit. Unless you know how to manage them after the practice, then you don't do it. Right, because this could lead to what? Uh, abnormal uh, imbalances of energy flowing through your system. Right. That alone yeah, will tell us how sensitive this technique is. Not to mention, yeah, we're not yet finished. During Murcha, Murcha Pranayama, we do what? Kung Baka. Pura Kung Baka or Antar Kung Baka. At the top of the breath, while everything is happening there, you hold the breath. Yeah, and then holding the breath is even longer than your normal kumbaka. For example, during the Nadi Shodana, yeah, even without you doing the other things there, so you hold it as long as it feels light, and then release and exhale the other side. But in Murcha Pranayama, we hold the kumbaka even twice as long as your normal kumbaka because you need to go past that comfortable zone. Yeah, it's just that it's not a normal kumbaka. Yeah. With the head tilting back and your eye gaze looking there and the tongue and you hold the breath longer than the normal kumbaka. Yeah, and at the moment you release it, since you're opening the pathway, the energy you know, will rush to the brain. And without you having the internal support system, this could overload your brain. All right. Now, the body. There are requirements needed for the body. Now first, spine alignment, because you need to allow the energy to travel you know, evenly, you know, move through the rest of your spine. And it's not just pressing of the hands or the elbows lengthen. It's like you're suspending up in the arm bones at the shoulders, yeah, hang freely, and the elbows are straight, but you don't push. And there is a required position, yeah, sitting in the Siddha Asana, or the Siddha Yoni Asana, Padmasana, or the Swastika Asana. These three positions, sitting positions, are required for us to practice the Murcha safely. Why? Why do we need to learn either one of these three, or all of them? Because binding legs, yeah, especially the Siddha Asana, controls yeah, the blood pressure. So we don't experience this sudden drop of blood pressure and sudden drop of body temperature. Because the Siddha Asana, the stimulation of the perineal nerves there and the muscles with the heels pressing there shall keep the blood flow healthy through our system. And the Padmasana and the Swastika Asana too. So if you're just sitting normally, yeah, this could suddenly impact your body temperature. Yes, and in those positions, although externally you're crossing the legs, but there are distinctive ways for us to position the legs so we can you know, stimulate the lower centers of the body, the the system, the chakras, would take many years to learn. Just building the flexibility of the knees, the ankles, and the lower back. So yes, yeah. when we look at, for example, instructions, the books, wow, it's doable. You just sit and do this and do that. But there are many things happening within yeah, which require many years of practicing and mastering. Just one technique alone will take, what, not even, not months, you know, years. Yeah? And then we need to be good or even master each individual techniques and then do them separately without causing pain before we combine them all together in one technique. Yes, yeah, Hatha Yoga is beautiful. Yeah, these techniques are beautiful. This, they help us promote yeah, um, our meditative qualities. Yeah, but the question is, what for? If your calling is there, 
by all means seek guidance because guidance a teacher who have been in and out of the process yeah will be able to guide you through yeah, the journey safely but if your goal is just to promote general health yeah just to relax and calm the brain after a stressful day you don't need them yeah so just do the flow yeah the asana to open the body and then maybe that is shodana which is doable yeah i recommend that for all chanting yeah they all give the same benefit but in a much lower intensity something which promotes what yeah clarity peace content happiness relaxation because the advanced ones yeah although yeah yes um the effect is beautiful yeah higher stages but they're not easy and as we go through them you know we will be faced with our own uh, tendencies yeah. our samskaras our traumas because we are awakening dormant centers in the body and the brain and this could lead to what the activation and the awakening um, of our um, subconscious realms and this include our deeply hidden tendencies and yeah unless yeah it's our calling they are better left unknown and untouched thank you for listening and i'll catch you in the next one namaste